Someone asked me the other day, like, how do you still have motivation to grow? And if you didn't have an audience, would you keep growing? Like, would you keep working on you? And it's a good question because a lot of times you have narcissists that peter out of like, they're going to change. They tell you they're going to do better. They tell you they're going to work on themselves. And at the end of the day, it only lasts for a couple of days, a couple of weeks, a couple of months. And this whole aspect of change with a narcissist is one that people are normally searching and like pursuing for of like, are they going to change? Is this actually going to happen? Many times you have narcissists that profess that there's going to be change. So they say something is going to change and then it never does. Like it's only something of a thought or a concept, but it actually doesn't go farther than that or it doesn't go farther than them trying just to do something small in order to manipulate you to stay. Well, part of my journey on social media and on the stuff that I do now with coaching and with different communities that we have didn't start off ever with the idea that this is going to be a business or that this is going to be a life calling by any means. Now, I would went through a period of time where I was in the finished up the fourth affair with a girl who had BPD and was in the middle of a fifth affair. And got, got um, aware of and went into Wake Up Warrior. And Wake Up Warrior at that time, I was just like, I have no clue what this is. Like, what's the point of this? Uh, but I was kind of desperate. And I was looking for anything at that point to help me and to help like change me. There was a point where I didn't know like I needed to be changed or that I even wanted to, wanted to change anything. But I also knew what I was looking at is my life was not working. Like how my life was functioning with affairs, with cheating, with my life like falling apart, like business, uh, family, like relationships, all this stuff. I was like, this isn't how life should be. This isn't how it should work. At that time, I didn't know who I was. I didn't know anything about narcissism, but I knew it wasn't working. And so there's like this pursuit of like, okay, what do I need to do to be able to fix it? What do I need to do to be able to change it? Like, what do I need to do? And I stumbled across Wake Up Warrior and I, I dove in. And uh, I wish I could say like, hey, like that was like the one thing that like fixed me from there on. That was one thing that started it. And the one thing that helped like educate me in a couple different ways of understanding like the lies that I believe. And so big concept of narcissism and even survivors is everybody's running from the truth, period. Like you have survivors that are running from the truth of who they are and what they've done. And you have survivors that are running away from the truth of the pain that they have to be able to walk through to be able to get to the healing and to be able to work like on them and to be able to move forward. And so there's this concept that a lot of people are running away from themselves, period. So I was doing the same thing and I was doing that, but I was changing it on my mind so I didn't feel bad about it. Like I was using different lies and manipulations of my part, making myself think, hey, I'm a good person or hey, I'm a good guy or hey, at least I provide, you know, at least I still love my wife while I'm cheating on her. Like the whole mindset was like really, really messed up. And there was like a point of understanding, okay, if I don't change something, like this is going to keep happening. And I started realizing that I was stuck in a cycle, like over and over and over again, the same thing was going to happen. There was a point in my life when I was struggling with different affairs and struggling with like lust and after people, all this kind of stuff. Where I was like, maybe this is just a cycle. You know, maybe this is a, maybe this is a place where I feel like cursed. Like I'm going to struggle with this every single year or every single like so often it would just happen. And I, I'd seen a cycle before. I'd seen a cycle in myself of being with multiple people and of starting a relationship as one was like finishing at the same time, like all these different things so I didn't have to be alone and so I didn't have to feel bad about myself. And so when I started to get to the place of like understanding some of this and just, I guess, uh, back up for a second. Whether Wake Up Warrior was in an affair, uh, got out of the affair, um, but at the same time, like my wife left and was going through a lot of different things of trying to figure out me uh, into therapy, still doing stuff with Wake Up Warrior, still working on myself, still trying to do that, but I wasn't actually like doing the work enough to actually like, make change and make stuff happen. And then as I started to get the fifth of air out of my life and I started to actually be like, okay, like if I'm going to do this, I'm actually going to do this. Started to get into it more and more, started working work therapy more and more, like there started to become more of a change and more of a direction of, okay, where am I actually going? How am I actually living versus how I have uh, and that cycle piece that I was talking about started to disintegrate as far as this isn't where I want to go. And I got to a place like inside a wake up warrior of the idea of like, hey, like if I want to be a man, I need to just tell the truth. And I need to tell the truth in everything, like not just one particular area and not just one for one particular person, but with everyone and with everything. 
And so it took me a long time because I originally started to put stuff on Instagram and I was like, hey, like this is me changing. This is me working on this. This is stuff that's happened, et cetera, et cetera. And that's when I started seeing like hate from the Christian community, uh, from that community of like, why are you putting this out there? Like, do you realize like what kind of testimony this is to other people? Do you realize like uh, you're putting this on social media, like your, your daughter's going to see this one day, like all this kind of stuff. And I'm just like, yeah, like I was at the point where I was like, I want my daughter to see this and know this so she doesn't get with someone who is like me. Like I want people to be able to actually like figure this out and I want to be able to change like who I am. And so like continuing to like drive forward of like, I want to put this out there. But I got to the place with Instagram on my personal page. I was like, I'm, I'm done. Like I was just like tired of getting like people come at me and I was tired of it not really like taking off or like growing in one sense. And so I was like, okay. And I kind of stopped for a while. Well, then I picked up TikTok and kind of opened that up and started processing and like uh, thought about it for a while, thought about it for a while, finally just posted like the first video of like, okay, like last year was awful, like this is what's happened, et cetera, et cetera, and started to get traction and started to have people like immediately like resonate with the things that I was saying. And so like the whole goal, like starting off was never to even create social media platform. It was just, okay, this is me. If I'm going to be honest to my wife, and I'm going to be honest to God, and I'm going to be honest to my therapist, and I'm going to be honest to myself... Why not be honest to everybody to make it a little bit easier, okay, to hold myself accountable? Uh, but at that point, it was just like, I just wanted to share. I just wanted to be like, okay, this is what, I, what I'm doing. This is who I am. I'm like redefining like myself kind of a thing. So started on social media, kept going. It just kind of blew up in one sense. Uh, started doing stuff with content creation, then started doing stuff as far as like helping coach people and try to work on like them breaking free mentally and emotionally. Uh, there's a piece that like I understood the trauma bond to a different level than what I think some other narcissists do because of the girl that I got with that had BPD and like narcissistic traits. There is definitely like big ties there that feel, at least to me, as far as what I know, it feels like the aspect of the trauma bond where I knew she was toxic, but I couldn't get her out of my life and I didn't want her out of my life. And I thought like eventually like everybody could just be happy like together. Like it was really, really, really messed up thinking. And so like thinking that this change would be able to happen and I'd be able to be this person with still having her in my life, like it kept this like un unusual balance uh, dynamic of like, I want this person, I don't want this person. Same aspect of like the trauma bond. And so got to the place where she was out of my life, like everybody else was out of my life and I was like working on myself and like started to realize that no matter what type of change I was seeking, that change could only come from me. Like it can't be from anyone else. And, and that's what I say to a lot of people is like the change has to come from you. It can't come from anyone else, anything else for any other reason. A lot of times you have a narcissist that'll contact me and he'll be like, like she's finally leaving me. I just want my wife back. I, I love her so much. And I'm like, technically you don't. Like if you loved her so much, then you wouldn't have cheated on her five times. And, and that's me talking to myself a lot of times when I talk to a narcissist because I'm like, you're not demonstrating love. You're not actually doing love. You're not showing love on a day-to-day -day basis. So you can't really say that you love this person because you haven't shown it. You haven't actually demonstrated it at all. But typically that has to be really broken down and they get pissed off and they leave. But I'm like, you need to actually acknowledge like where you actually are. But when they come and they're like, oh, I want to change to be able to do this, to be able to save my relationship, to be able to work on this, like nine times out of 10, it's never going to work. Because at that point, like the change that's happening isn't one that's actually inside. Isn't one that's actually like compelling the other person inside. But instead it's like, oh, let me do this to logically keep the person. And oftentimes there's selfish reasons underneath. If I keep this person, I get a tax break. If I keep this person, I look better. If I keep this person, I don't have to pay child support. Like there's so many different things that are going on, but typically with a narcissist, it comes down to image and money. What do I have to do to be able to keep myself in a certain place? Now, sometimes people ask like early on, like if I was so unhappy in the relationship, why didn't I leave? Like, why didn't I just tell like Kayla, like, hey, I'm done. It is like the crazy part with narcissism. And for me with religion in the background, I also believe that that kept me like locked in or like trapped of like, I can't get out of this relationship because it'll look bad in the religion I believe. It'll look bad to my parents. It'll look bad to other family. And I'm the one that did wrong. So I don't think I have the right to leave. All these things would kind of play through my head. Right, wrong, or indifferent, they were excuses of me not actually wanting to show up as a man. They're excuses of me not wanting to be truthful and vulnerable with my wife to continue moving forward. And so now the motivation to change is also this motivation of like intense honesty, of being honest about who I am, 
about what I've done and about like moving forward of the direction I'm going. And there's a point that like I can look at someone in the eye and I don't have this fear anymore of me being like, well, I'm holding something back or I'm, there's something I'm hiding or like this person has something over me or something like that. I'm just like, no, like I'm being honest about my life. I'm being honest about where I am, being transparent on live events, on you know social media, on like different like uh, YouTube, TikTok, shorts, like all this kind of stuff. Of like I'm I'm there and I'm saying like, hey, this is who I am. And this sometimes is like jarring for people because they don't like that and they don't like to like see like whoa like this is what's going on. But for a lot of people, I found it's providing clarity, it's providing help of understanding what is actually going on in your toxic relationship with the relationship that you have with the narcissist because you might have gone through the same thing. Maybe he cheated on you. Maybe he left you. Maybe he disengaged for the first couple of years of like Giles life because he's showing by his actions that he doesn't care. But then oftentimes you'll have this moment of you're like, oh, I'm going to leave. And then he's magically changed, magically better. All of a sudden everything's fixed and greatest dad of the year. And so like you have to understand there's a manipulation a aspect when it comes to change when we're talking about narcissists that is all self-preservation of let me do this to look better. Let me do this to be better. For me, like I realized like early on, like that's not going to suffice. That's not going to last long term. And so if I'm making this change, it means if my wife's with me, I'm working on myself. If she's not with me, then I'm working on myself. Like that is the only way, like moving forward. That is the only way that I can actually go or else I know I'm gonna go back. I know the direction that my mind would wanna go, that my heart would wanna go. So instead it's pulling that back and starting to train that in another way to resist that and to be able to move towards a different direction. To be able to move towards something that's actually helping me grow, heal, change, and develop. If you're at the place today where you're like, I want that change too, okay? Whether you're a narcissist or whether you're a, a survivor, whatever it might be, and you're like, I want that change. If you're a survivor, I wanna invite you to go to theclaritychallenge.net. The Clarity Challenge is a 45-day challenge that helps you break free mentally and emotionally from narcissistic abuse. It helps you actually rewire the story that you're believing on a day-to-day -day basis so that you can actually get to the place where you're living in truth versus that fog and the fiction of the reality that you're in where you think the person cares about you, but they're not actually showing it, but they're not actually demonstrating it. Go on there today to be able to see, hey, how can I actually get free from this? So if you're a survivor today or if you think you're in a narcissistic relationship, go to claritychallenge.net. If you're a narcissist and you're like, okay, I'm interested. Maybe I want to talk to you. Maybe I want to see then go to rawmotivations.com, click on the one-on-ones, hit the thing that says for narcissists, and let's talk. Because I'm still here to be able to help people on any stage of their journey, but it all depends on how much you are willing to invest in you and how much you are willing to be truthful about yourself.